Now, we got to do something because it's time, y'all. It's time to do this. And let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Good morning, y'all. Hey, boss lady. Hello, beautiful Paris. Good morning, y'all. Oh my goodness, looking beautiful this morning. Hey buddy, it's gonna be a lovely day, ain't it buddy? Yeah, sure he is. Sure he is. Booty and top over there. We'll put the hay over there this time. Let this area rest. And uh, so they're over there with the hay this morning. Y'all come on, I'm fixing to feed y'all. There you go. Oh, really? Sweet. Yeah, let me finish. Yeah, I got to feed Topper and Joe and uh, go look at the uh, chickens and I'll be right on. All right. So, that was Brooke. Um, she just saw something posted on social media that was pretty awesome. Let me feed these guys and I'll tell you about it. Hey, buddy. You ready? Come on. So do y'all remember uh, several months ago when we saw that the Arbor, Alabama Arbor Foundation was giving away some free trees and we drove all the way over there and they were all gone? Well, Brooke just saw a post this morning that in our hometown, not the one their original hometown, our current hometown, is doing the same thing. And we're up early. So, and it's only 10, 15 minutes away, not an hour. So we're gonna try to catch it this time after I get through feeding the chickens. Ain't that right, Moody? Big baby. Hey, Holly, guess what? We might be getting some trees and guess what else? Guess what? It's potato season, that's right. Taters came in, girl. Oh, what a big day on the farm today, yeah. Oh my gracious. Super exciting, ain't it? Yeah. Super exciting. Hello, ladies. Look at y'all. Oh my gracious, y'all, they are doing a number on this ground too. We're gonna have to move this one sooner than later. Thank y'all so much. I really appreciate y'all. Y'all, I can't believe that they got the trees. Um, This is pretty awesome. If, if, I say that, I say that. We may get there and then we all go, who knows? But we're gonna try to get there about 10, 15 minutes before they said they're giving them out. So good and then we're gonna come back plant the trees if we can and we gotta get it's potato season it's potato season y'all we gotta get ready y'all look at these babies i wanted to give y'all a quick update on the silkies eight of them hatched so they're done they're several days old now as you guys can see uh, there are three light color ones or white color ones right here. Now that one right there, that one looks like it's going to be pretty white. Now these two are not going to be solid white, I don't think. Uh, they're going to be like a lemon or a porcelain or something. They got a little hue to their color. Now, of course, you can see the one brown one or uh, birchin or not quite for sure what color it's going to be. But it's definitely got lots of brown in it right there then the rest are black now they don't mean they're going to be solid black they could be silver they could have different variations in there but for the most part they are black now there's the little showgirl i don't know what it's doing but there it goes look <laughs> oh isn't it precious but they are super healthy they're doing fabulous just absolutely fabulous everybody is doing wonderful um but i wanted to show you guys the little silky chicks and how well they're doing and everybody's doing great so now we're fixing to load up in the pickup truck head to town and see about these trees that the arbor foundation is uh giving away here in our area what you guys think Hmm? You want to ride with us? Look at the folks.
folks lined up to get trees. Wow, they already get them. Look at there, golly. Wow. All right, so we got, all right, so I'm gonna tell you what I got. I think you got very similar, but we got the scarlet oak trees. Mm -hmm. We got a wild native persimmons. Yes. We got sugarberry. Uh -huh. We got a mayhaw. 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 And we got a one that I can't remember the name of Carolina Buck something. Never heard of that one. And because it, it produced small berries. And then you got a river birch. Uh -huh. We got tulip populars. Uh -huh. We got eastern red buds. Uh -huh. And is that it? Don't ask me. <laughs> da, da, da. I yeah, I think that's it. If there's another one, well, I'll tell you later in the video. But yeah, we we got. It was an awesome turnout and a wonderful and they setup. Have, I bet they got a thousand trees. Yes, <laughs> and they were asking people how many they wanted. Yeah, so it was a lot. Uh, things that I saw the dogwood, of course, was was the one flying out. Though I think she had four left because those are so popular, and we got them all over our property. And I noticed the elderberries were almost gone. So those two were the most popular ones by far, everybody. But I also heard people saying persimmon. Yeah, there were a lot of persimmons. A lot of persimmons. I just hope that they know they're getting the native persimmon versus the big, beautiful Asian persimmon that is so popular now because the Asian persimmon is not astringent like your regular persimmon is. Well, uh, if they have a peaches at their house. That's right. <laughs> peaches the pot belly pig, that is. <laughs> Then they need the native persimmon. Yes, the animals love the persimmons. We never actually, we, me and Mary Carl would eat some of our wild persimmons, but uh, it's a lot of seed, not much fruit, but the animals thoroughly enjoyed them, especially peaches. And we're all about our animals. So, that's right. And that's why we passed on the red maple because they are poisonous to animals. Yes, they are. So we didn't want to add anything that yep. could be a hindrance to anybody. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's a good turnout. I mean, look at the line. It's, it's still... a lot of people, and we were at the end of the line a minute ago. It does go fast. It's a long line. They were doing a great job at organization. They were. That was really nice. Keeping really, the really nice. And, and so courteous asking people what they actually wanted yeah. versus here, this is what you get. Right. It was it was great. Now, do we plant them or do I need to pot them up? We plant them. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back here behind the house and this is where we're going to start planting some trees all right so we are wanting to so we got some ginkgo trees we planted back here but i think we're going to plant some trees back here i'm thinking something like right here for a red bud yeah that's a good spot yeah that's a good spot all right so we'll put us a little flag right, there's one i think we got four red buds okay red buds are really pretty you usually see them in the forest on the sides that's where it is kind of on the edge and you can just see them just randomly blooming and you know a red bud because it's gorgeous just pretty 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 pink bloom i can see the red bud and you can tell it <laughs> because it just stands out because most of the time the leaves haven't come back on yet everything's kind of gray and then there's a red bud and you can see that one right there easily it is magnificent um there's bees on it oh yeah i hear them there's a low branch yeah but there it is dude i, I love this time of year or a little bit later because it's going to bloom really beautiful and you're driving down a rural area and you can just see these trees just everywhere and they're just so pretty downside is is their bloom season doesn't last super long and once they're through blooming you know they just kind of just disappear but they're gorgeous trees and native to our area and the wildlife loves them as you can see the honeybees are all over it so they're really going to enjoy ours and it's actually just now budding out. It is uh, 
it's not nearly in full bloom. Maybe we can try to remember to come back over here when it's in full bloom and show you guys how beautiful they are. Y'all can see the ducks are still enjoying the pond pretty much down here all the time, especially this group. And they do go back and forth, but they pretty much hang out here majority of the time. You see the pond still got a good ways to go. It has, it has dropped some, but you can see it's still got tons of water in it. And according to Greg, it will take a little while for the ground to get saturated enough where it will not drop quite as much in the coming future. And that's, that's what takes a while. Okay, to show you guys again, this is our red buds. This is the scarlet oak trees. This is mayhaw. This is persimmons, wild persimmons. This is sugar berries. This is a river birch. And these are tulip poplars. And, and this is Carolina buck thorn. So we're gonna go ahead and plant these and then figure out where the rest of these trees are gonna go. in a pot for now because they like really mo moist soil and they want some sun and I got a spot that I can do that in but it's not ready yet so I'm going to just pot these guys up and give them some water and just start growing them in these pots and when I am ready for them then we'll plant them. That was a tree that was not on the list that was they had, you know, brought over there. So I kind of wasn't ready for that one and I really didn't know the growing requirements of it, but that's okay. We got somewhere we can plant it, just not now. <laughs> all right, we got all the trees planted. And what's great about the trees we got is that they're native trees. So they are native to our area, which means I really don't have to do anything special to them. I don't have to worry about, you know, really adding a bunch of compost and stuff to the soil. They are native to our area, so they should adapt well to everything we throw at them because this is where they typically live. And the ones that need water, uh, of course, the ones I planted in the greenhouse, and we had one river birch that I did put in one little wet spot. Other than that, just as long as I give them the right light requirement, they should adapt well here on the farm and just give us some beautiful, beautiful trees. Now, I did plant the persimmons in areas where I plan on typically having uh, poultry or some type of birds or even peaches. So I got those in that area over there. I even got to a couple close to the barn area as well. The other ones I just kind of put in spots that I thought would do well and places where we really don't have to worry about anything and don't have to worry about it falling on the house don't have to worry about it you know getting into any type of lines or drainage or uh septic tank or any of that business even the fences i paid close attention where i was putting them you know where we may and may not put fences so got all that straightened out got them planted super excited but this is something that we'll have to be patient on because it's going to be several, several years before we see any benefits from the trees. But all that being said, I'm happy that we got them and at some point we should enjoy them. But now, now we got to do something because it's time, y'all. It's time to do this. And let me show you guys what I'm talking about. It's potato season. Here in Alabama, we're in zone 8A. It is time for me 
to get ready to start planting potatoes. Uh, this is a, this will be, I, I love potatoes, number one. It's one of my favorite, favorite vegetables. And let me show you what I'm gonna do different here than I did at my other farm. So I am growing four different varieties of potatoes. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you what those are. Number one is Purple Majestic. This is Mary Carl's favorite and kids love this potato. If you wanna get your kids interested in gardening, always plant something that they like. Mary Carl loves this one. And there's nothing cooler than purple mashed potatoes, let me tell you. And kids absolutely go crazy about it because they never see anything like it. So again, if you're trying to get kids interested in gardening, always grow things that they like or cool stuff that you think they may like. Uh, a lot of times you'll find that children that won't eat certain vegetables may tend to eat them if they grow them. So purple potatoes, it is a win-win for everybody and they are pretty awesome. And they're really easy to grow. Let me show you what else we got. This one is, is a Norlin red. This is your simple red potato. I should have shown you the other one. Um, this is the Norlin red, red potato. Let me show you all the purple majestic real quick. But here are the purple majestics. Now, we're not gonna wash these off or anything and I'll show you what we're fixing to do. So red Norlin, your basic red potato. Love them, love them, love them. These are a new one that I'm growing. I uh, did research on them supposed to be fabulous and this is the Austrian crescent potato so we are growing these this year that's a new one for me but it's supposed to be very very delicious and and the one and only easy to grow everybody knows it the Yukon gold uh, just an awesome potato another great one that you could grow instead of this one is the German Butterball. Again, very, very delicious. Uh, I like both of them. This year, I just chose the Yukon Go because I've done German Butterball the last couple of years. So this is what I'm gonna do different on this farm versus the other one. Number one, I cut, up the, cut open those purple potatoes and look, isn't that awesome? They're just gorgeous. I mean, it's just, you can see why children would love them and how cool they look. So here's what I'm gonna do. So here is your typical potato. This is a red potato, and you can see all these little sprouts, all these little spuds. Those are potential potato plants. So you can take this one potato, and look, y'all, I mean, you're talking, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, possibly 15 plants out of this one potato. That's unreal. That's what makes growing potatoes so awesome. If you got a small garden, you could have like two or three of these and have a ton of potatoes. Now, my other farm, I didn't cut them up. Um, if I did, like this size here, I would just cut it in half and plant it because I just, it was just hard for me to get just a few potatoes. So I'd get a two or three pound bag of potatoes and that was enough potatoes that uh, I literally didn't have to cut them up. Here, I got lots of space and I can plant as many potatoes as my little heart desires. So I'm cutting them up and like here's one, one. So you don't have to do each individual one, but I'm just cutting these guys and try to get, you want some meat on the potato. You don't want to, uh, you don't want just to, you know, it's got to have some meat on it. How much? I don't know. That varies. Depends on who you ask. Um, Y'all know me. I don't take things so technical. So this always works for me. Just I just eyeball it and it always works. I'm never having issues. I wasn't even counting. But I got a lot of potatoes out of this one plant, I can tell you all that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut all of our potatoes up just like so before we plant them. But this little bitty potato, I'm going to get four plants out of this one little potato. That's unreal. Um, but, 
So we're, we're cutting our potatoes up and we're gonna let them dry out and scab over. So we want this to build a callus. It's gonna heal itself, basically what it's gonna do. And what that callus will do is it's gonna protect, it's gonna give a protective layer between the potato and the soil to keep it from rotting once we plant it in the ground. I think I got close to 100 out of the purple, majestic purple potatoes. And here, we're gonna get way more than that, I believe. And sometimes they're just so close together, there's nothing you can do except just cut them out. potatoes y'all and good thing about potatoes are they store real well so we don't have to worry about that and they freeze dry real well so we got several options we can do with potatoes um and we'll eat them i mean we'll eat the stew out of them we eat potatoes every week so several days a week so this food here will last us a long long time throughout the entire year that's pretty awesome now, let's go get the potato bed ready out in the garden. I'm gonna have to watch the weather, okay? So if it's gonna be a wet, wet time or we got lots of rain, I don't wanna plant them because chances are they're gonna rot in the ground. So that's the thing about planting potatoes in our area is, is we normally plant them during the, the rainy season and I have pushed back to middle of March before planting potatoes. So I'm just gonna watch the weather, see how it goes, but my plan is, is to hope to get these guys in the ground in the next week. Fingers crossed. Look at that from messing with those potatoes. <laughs> Y'all, look what came in. This is my water pump for the Ford 80 in tractor. Oh, so you know what that means. Hopefully I can get started back on that tractor now. Get that thing running. But the water pump is here. So this is the plow that my granddad had on his Ford tractor. And I was curious to what it did. So I, we, we did an area yesterday in the garden and it made this great little hill. And I started thinking about it. Man, that would be awesome to plant potatoes in. So let me go show you what this thing does. So this is a nice little hill it makes right here. Look at that. That is, I think that's gonna be great for growing these potatoes in. I really do. So I'm gonna do several rows. I don't know how many potatoes I can plant in one of these rows here, but I'm just gonna do several rows here and uh, get this thing ready. I'm excited about this now. So some of y'all probably wondering, do I got permission to be using the big O? And I do. Brooke had to go run some errands this afternoon. So, um. I decided that I got some stuff that needs to be done. Taters is one of them. And so I'm gonna get this field plowed and ready to plant some potatoes by in the next week or two. And this is why I want my tractor. This is why I want my old four day in going. I'm gonna get it going. The water pump's here, y'all. We're gonna get that thing going. But you know, like a day like today, if Brooke was doing something on the tractor, I could be out here on the Ford and it'd just be beautiful. But today I'm on the big O and we're fixing to plow this field. With the help of Holly. She is holding things down this afternoon. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing, but <laughs> she's having fun. I bet her nose is solid brown. Look at that. How awesome is that? Man, that is great. Perfect rows. Um, I'm trying to get my spacing right. I didn't know what I was doing, I'll be honest with you. You can see this first row I got way too wide, but that's okay. I'm learning because check this out. Check out this. Now this spacing is perfect. So I got better on it on this uh, time and look how beautiful those rows look. Man, 
All right, that's uh, I'm pretty stoked about it. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. All right, girl, we, I gotta work smarter in that hoarder. <laughs> I've been doing so much by hand. I gotta, I gotta let this tractor and stuff do the work. Help me anyways, right? Yeah, that's what I say. That's what I say. Yeah, that's what I say. That means more time to play with Holly. Mm -hmm. <laughs>